Hey guys, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, so I'm back. Um, I'm going to be focusing on artificial intelligence and prologue for um, for a, a bit of a series of videos I'm going to be making. It's going to be maybe five to six videos. I don't know yet. We'll see. This first video, I'm rushing it like a lot. Um, I'm just introducing basic concepts so that we can really get into the nitty gritty. Um, hopefully I'll get to back chaining trees. I might not, but this is just going to be a huge, just quick basics video. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So in prologue, it's 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 a it's it's a logic uh, programming language, right? So you're giving it facts, you're giving it statements called atomic sentences and conditional sentences, uh, or predicates, and uh, you you evaluate these. So, so you make a knowledge base, you make a dictionary of sorts, and then you ask questions to your knowledge base, and prologue will tell you their values if it's true or not, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going to pause for a second. I'll create a quick knowledge base, and we'll go through it. Alright, so this is using um, actual prologue syntax. So you always want to have a period at the end of your sentences here. Or at the end of your predicates, at the end of your atomic sentences. These are atomic sentences in that they're not conditionals. There's no if, uh, there's no then, it's just a thing. So when I say singer Bob, I actually mean Bob is a singer, right? The next line, singer Miranda, that means Miranda is a singer. Uh, similarly, Jess is an engineer. Okay, so when I have um, a conditional like this, this is a variable. Variables can change, they can be anything they, that, that you want them to be. So they can be any of those people, really. So when I say rich x, I'm saying um, x is rich if x is a philanthropist, right? So that's what that first one mm -hmm. is. Um, so this little colon with a dash, that's essentially your if. So if x is um, x, x is rich if x is a philanthropist. Similarly, x can also be rich if x is famous and x is a singer. It can only be one of these two conditionals. Um, it can't be both. Typically what happens is if you're going through it and you're trying to figure out if x is rich, but they're not a philanthropist, it will move on to the second conditional, the next conditional we'll find. Um, so an example of something that we might ask prologue with this knowledge base would be something like, uh, oh hey, is Greg a singer? Uh, this will come out as no, it will come out as false because we don't have any Gregs in our knowledge base at all. N like, never mind uh, Greg being a singer, he just doesn't exist at all. Now if we did something like this, engineer, Miranda. Now we have engineer and we have Miranda, but Miranda isn't an engineer. She's a singer. So this will also come out false. Now if we did something like this, singer Bob, Bob is a singer, definitely. It's the first line in our knowledge base, so that will pass for sure. Um, similarly, if we asked uh, prologue, hey, is, uh, is Jess rich? Uh, well, Jess is not a philanthropist, so we move on to the next conditional because that failed. Um, Jess isn't famous either. We don't have a, she's she's not famous and she's not a singer, so she's she's not rich. This will come out as false. However, if we put in uh, like rich is Eric rich, then this will pass because it passes with the first conditional. Eric is also a philanthropist, so he's rich. Now, if we ask ourselves if Miranda is rich, that first conditional fails because. Miranda isn't a philanthropist, Eric is, but Miranda isn't. Miranda's a singer. But in the second conditional, you can also be rich if you're famous and if you're a singer. So Miranda is a singer, we have that, and she's also famous, so she's rich. So this will pass, this will be a yes. Um, so there's a couple things that you can uh, that you can do with prologue, like relationships. So let's make two relationships, so let's have likes. Um, uh, Bob likes Rachel. And let's do another one for lives near. Uh, Bob lives near Rachel. So now we can make another conditional, which is friends. X, some person X and some person Y. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my phone's going crazy here. Some person X and some person Y can be friends if they live near each other. So if x lives near y, and that's what the comma means, and 
if x likes y. So in this case, if you ask prologue friends, Bob, Rachel, so you're asking prologue if Bob and Rachel are friends, this would pass as yes, because they both live near each other and they both like each other. Now, something good to add in this one would be to check and see if X and Y are the same person or not. We don't want someone to be friends with themselves because that's a little weird, let's, let's face it. So what we can do here um, is we can put in not x equals y. So what this does is it checks if x is equal to y and then I'll just reverse it, right? So if x and y are in fact the same person, um, this, won't, this won't pass it, it, because, because x and y are, aren't different. This is essentially asking prolog, hey, are x and y different? And if they are, then that condition passes. They also have to like each other and to live near each other to be friends but this will mean that they're different people, which is good. Now we have equals versus is, just the word is. Now the difference between the two of these is that is is for arithmetic. So if you did something like x is two times two, then prolog would say x equals four. Now an equal sign only checks equality. So if you did something like x equals, um, four for instance prologue would just check and see if x is equal to four it wouldn't assign four to x right um, x would stay whatever value it was before and prologue would just check and see if x is equal to four so if you're doing an assignment if you're giving value to a variable uh, if it's numeric then you can say x is four and then x will be four or you could say x is uh, 50 divided by 3, whatever you want. So that's some basic arithmetic stuff. I'll probably go into more detail about that later. It's not really important right now. Um, so I'm actually going to start uh, talking about back chaining. So I'm going to take out the predicates that we've already done. Okay. Okay, so um, in in prolog, when we're trying to search for something, when we ask, oops, oh boy, oh boy, all right, sorry, just a sec. Okay, sorry about that. So when we ask prolog a question, there are two steps. So step A is we have to look for the exact match of the thing we're asking, or we can look for an if then or a conditional statement whatever you want to call it uh, that helps us match what we're looking for so actually I'm going to leave that there that will be helpful we're going to ask our knowledge base um, is Rachel rich And so the first thing that we have to test is if she's a philanthropist, because that's the first conditional we, we run into in our, uh, in our knowledge base list. So, um, uh, yeah, so we test philanthropist if Rachel is a philanthropist. And this will, of course, fail. Rachel is not a philanthropist, that's not in our list. So now we have to back chain. We have to go back up here and evaluate this again. But since we've already done that first conditional, now we move on to the second one. So now we're working with our second conditional. So we have two conditions that we have to check. We have to check and see if Rachel is famous. And we have to check and see if Rachel is a singer. Whoops. Um, so in this case, with this failure, we notice that A fails because Rachel as a th philanthropist is nowhere in our list. And we have that B fails because there's no if statement that says like X is a philanthropist if and then some conditions. So they both fail um, on that left side there. Now on this right side, 
Uh, let's keep going here. We check and see if Rachel is famous. And she is not, so that also fails. So we look through our knowledge base again. Nowhere in there does it say that uh, Rachel is famous. So that's an X. A fails, but B also fails because there's no fam uh, X is famous if uh, some conditions are met. So it completely fails. So now we move on to Singer. Right? So with Singer, we check and see if Rachel's a singer, and that also fails. Nowhere in our list does it say that Rachel's a singer, and we don't have an if statement that helps us out. So that whole thing fails. Now we're going to do a second example where things are a little bit different. All right, so in this one, we're trying to ask prologue if just X is rich. So what happens here? Uh, this, is, this is getting a little weird. So what it'll do is it will go through our list of statements. We have no statement that deals with X, right? But we do have a couple of if statements that can help us out. We have two, in fact. So it'll touch on the first one, and it will ask itself, OK, well, I need X to be a philanthropist uh, for, for X to be rich. So here we have philanthropist X. And now we have to check through our list to see when X is a philanthropist. So X is a th philanthropist when X is Eric, so that means that rich x is successful when x is equal to Eric. Now we have another side here because we have two conditional statements. So we have to evaluate famous x and singer x. So now we go down our list and we find out that the first person who is famous is Miranda. So x equals x equals Miranda. So now we're essentially going to test uh, famous Miranda and singer Miranda okay so we already know that famous Miranda passes uh, but now we have to check and see if singer Miranda is a thing so it is so that succeeds so that means that we have uh, oh sorry this succeeds for x equals Miranda that means that we effectively have two answers here so rich x passes when x is equal to Eric, or if x is equal to Miranda. And that looks about right. No one else can be, uh, can be rich in our list, according to the rules that we've set. So I hope that helps out a little bit. Um, in terms of the, the back chaining graph here, um, for the people in my computer science program, they did this a whole bunch of different ways. Um, in the labs, they did it different. In uh, lectures, they did it different. Um, this is how they did it on uh, the, the lecture slides. So this is the way that I feel is safest. But uh, for the midterm, I would review every method. Um, this is my favorite method. It's the simplest. It's the one that makes the most sense, but I could be entirely wrong. Uh, for the people who are here just to learn the concept of backchaining, uh, this is a perfectly acceptable method to learn backchaining. So hopefully in the next video, we're going to uh, learn some more relevant stuff. We're going to be uh, looking at some, uh, some prologue now. So yeah, I hope this helped. Happy studying, and feel free to subscribe. And we'll see you in the... In, sorry, tongue twister there. We'll see you in the next video, is what I meant to say.